Okay, today what we're going to do is look at um, setting up an NFS share in TrueNAS, um, what things to pay attention to when doing the mount of the share onto a, a Linux host, and um, some considerations uh, when building the, the entire share. So we'll just go step by step. Um, first of all, just one disclaimer. Uh, I know the memory, etc. all of this um, is way too small for a production system of TrueNAS. It's just a demo, um, and it's just a quick uh, virtual machine install of TrueNAS scale. So the first thing that you would need to do is make sure you have your pool set up. So in this case, it's already set up with uh, a one disk um, wide uh, pool, again, just for demo purposes. But um, uh, you can always uh, set up a more um, expansive pool or create a new pool um, if you have more disks. So again, for demo purposes, I'm not going into the pool too much. What we will look at is the data sets. So here we have a share, um, and this is already mounted uh, with the correct permissions on a Linux box. So we can show that here. Um, it, this is already mounted to this uh, downloads TrueNAS test uh, directory, which you can see right here. Um, and we already have a couple of files. So if we just do a quick ls. Um, we can touch to do a new file, so test2. Uh, text and you can see that we uh, indeed have write permissions so that was already existing so we'll do a test 3.txt and again ls you can see the test 3 right there um, and then we can edit these so test 3 editing this file cat out the test 3 you can see all of that is existing. Uh, and if we want to double check to make sure this is really stored on the TrueNAS, we can always go to the shell. And then we'll go to our mount pool, ls. We can ls show share. And you can see all the files that we have, again, one to one. Make this a little bit bigger, one to one with what we see in the Linux box. Um, to further sort of show this, you can run the df command and you can see the NFS share mounted here. Okay, so how did we get here? Well, in, in the data set, uh, once you have it created, uh, the data set, we can create a new one. Let's say, Joe share, oh, we'll just call it NFS share. We have the NFS share and we're going to use the generic preset. This is the one you need for NFS. If you're doing Samba, you would go with the Samba share, which has different permissions. Uh, but we're just going to go with the generic share for NFS. In the uh, share, once we have it, you'll have all of your uh, data set details, data set protection, data set space management, etc. roles. Um, for here, uh, there's the permissions. Now you can create the NFS share here. Uh, the way I'm going to do it is sort of the old fashioned way. Um, but first is the permission. So this permission is set as root. Now this is the root user of the TrueNAS, not the root user of your Linux system. So when we uh, share this out, <coughs> we want to make sure that the user is set correctly. So we need to, in this case, set it to Joe. Now what's important is you don't just create the user or the user Joe does not exist in TrueNAS by default the user gets created in the credentials section. So you can have, you look at your local users, and we have this local user um, whose username is Joe. And what's important is the UID is the same as the UID of the host system. Well, where do you find that? Well, in most Linux systems, you can cat out Etsy pass wd password and inside of this file you'll get the user who in this case is user joe and on a linux system the default is 1000 so you need to make sure that you have the same user so that the uh, owner of the data set is the same owner as the user of the mount directory so if we go back to our data set 
and say the permission is set as root um, in this NFS share, we want to change it over to the user who will be mounting the directory. If we do not do this, um, the user uh, may be able to mount the directory. However, uh, they would not be able to write to the directory. So they would have no write permissions. Okay, so we're going to apply this, apply group, and we're going to save. So now that we have the permission set up for the NFS share, we're going to go to shares. Then we have this NFS share. This is service is already running. Um, we're going to add a new path. So we're going to go over here, select the data set. We can give it a description, which is uh, test NFS share. Um, we can also restrict the networks. So we can add a restricted network, which would be something like this in this case. Oops, that should be 24. Okay, so this means that we're restricting to this local only network for the 192.168.122.0 slash 24. So that's um, a netmask 24, which is the most common netmask for most local networks. Um, and we're going to create that and save. So now we should have this mount pool NFS share over here. And we're going to try to mount it. So we're going to go up a directory. We're going to make a new directory of NFS test. Then we're going to mount. Mount needs to be run with uh, eg executive permissions. So we're doing mount t type NFS. Then we're going to add in the host address of the local host. And then we need to have the full path, so we can just copy that. And then we're going to say mount it at this directory. So we add in the credentials, and now we can do our DFH again. And we can see we indeed have another NFS share mounted at this new location. So we can see both of them located right there. Now we can go into our NFS share, NFS test. We can try to touch a new test file, ls, and indeed we can see the file. Okay, so that's really all there is to it for creating the NFS share. Now, one caveat um, in case, for example, you want multiple users, or say, for example, you're mounting this over to um, uh, perhaps a web server or something like that, and you don't want to restrict the user, um, you just want open permissions, so all users of that Linux box, um, uh, which could also be applications. Applications sometimes are run um, as different users. Uh, for example, uh, if you're running a web server like Apache, Apache will often have a user called um, www-data or on Red Hat systems, the user is called Apache. Um, those, in those cases, uh, if you needed both the root user and the Apache system, anyways, if you needed multiple users of the Linux host to have access, what you can do is in the data set, you can't open up permissions. So you can always add write access to other members of a group or just other. Um, if you have all nine of these checks boxes checked, this is essentially the same thing as if you're running um, a chmod uh, 0777, which normally is considered taboo, like you wouldn't normally do that. I think if for NFS, um, because you can restrict the network, and your TrueNAS box, your TrueNAS scale box should never be exposed to the internet. Um, it may be reasonable to set it this way. Um, however, do so with caution. So you have to know what you're doing. Um, and you need to make sure that in your share, when we have it over here, you are restricting the network. And you can even go as far as to restrict host. So um, this is something that is just generally available in the NFS protocol. But in TrueNAS, they make it easy. 
right here in the UI so that you can um, set and restrict that. So I hope that was an informative tutorial about just getting started with NFS on TrueNAS Scale. And um, yeah, I hope it was helpful. So end of 2024, hope everyone's having a good holiday season and I'll be back in 2025. So take care, everyone.